And the title for today is Provided. Provided. That's it. Nothing fancy. Nothing short. Provided. The heart of this series that we are in, Panic Mode, is to learn how to trust in the fullness and the sovereignty of God and do our part to avoid that panic mode. You guys know what that panic mode is by now. It is that set of circumstances that came unexpected that all of a sudden now you've got to handle. You weren't expecting to have to handle it, and now you have to react right and act right. How many of you guys it's two different things, right? Acting right and reacting right are two different things. Uh, you might get one right and the other one wrong. So we got to learn how to act right in the middle of the circumstances. And, and I want to jump right into Scripture today. Can we go into Scripture? Can we go? All right. Go with me to Genesis chapter 2. We're going to jump right into it. Get right into it. Happy Father's Day. Did you get your gift? Man. All right. You got it in your hand. What are you talking about? You didn't get it. You got it in your hand. Oh, he's talking about the other kind of gift. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Stop. Genesis chapter 22. In the beginning. No. Genesis chapter 22. Let's go. What is it? Let's go. Genesis 22, verses 1 to 14. Guys, I'm going to tell you, I've said it before many times. At here, at Thrive, we're going to have fun. The, the world's serious enough, and we ain't trying to be like the world, are we? He said, do not be accustomed to the ways of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. If you don't know how to have fun as a godly person, then you don't know the God that I know. Simple as that. All right, Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 through 14. This is a story that many of us may be familiar with, and if you're not, that's okay because we're going to read through it, right? So 22.1 says, you guys know who Abraham, right? Abraham, the, the, the kind of the, the forefather of the faith, right? So after God had done some things with, with Abraham, we pick up here in chapter 22, verse 1. So sometime later, God tested Abraham. Can we stop there for a second? What did God do with Abraham? He tested him. Sometime later, he did what? He tested him. Guys, God will test you sometimes. And you guys have probably heard the cliche, nobody's ever gotten a promotion without a test. Nobody's ever gone to the next grade level without a test. You want to move forward in life, there's going to be some testing. All right, let's keep going. He said to him, Abraham... Here I am, Abraham replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah, sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain I will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham got up. By the way, no hesitation. Crazy request, no hesitation. Some of us hesitate when God tells us to make a phone call and pray for somebody. God told him to do something quite serious and no hesitation. So he got up the next morning early and he loaded his donkey. Okay, that was the newest model back then, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he, 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 <laughs> he took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. And when he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. And on the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Can, can I stop for a second? How, how many of you guys know the story, familiar with the story? Some of you guys are familiar with this story. I find something so interesting here. We see Isaac or we see Abraham telling his servants what we're going to do. We're going to go over there. We're going to worship. We'll be back to you. Right? Some of us reading this, if you know the end of the story, some of us reading this think that Abraham might have been lying to Isaac, might have been lying to the servants, yes or no? They're like, he's like, I'm going to tell you a story. We'll be back, you know, when he knew he wasn't supposed to be coming back with a son. Yes or no? What was Abraham going to do? Abraham was told to go sacrifice his son. So Abraham's like, yo, you guys serve and stay here with the ride. We're going to be back, right? And me and the son, we're going to go, we're going to worship, we're going to come back. If, if you read that without knowing the fullness of the story and without seeing the purpose of what Abraham really was doing, remember, Abraham was a man of God, okay? As I read this, sometimes I used to think that, man, Abraham was lying to everybody. Like God told him to do something, Abraham was lying to everybody, telling them, we're going to worship, then we're going to come back. You know very well you're supposed to leave your son up there. But then I got to clicking and got to thinking, and all of a sudden it made clear to me, 
Abraham knew that God had a plan, and Abraham knew that God wasn't going to take the most precious thing to him. He knew he had to be obedient to the very end. He knew, maybe, 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 in faith, he already knew that he was, in fact, coming back with his son. Maybe he wasn't telling a lie to his son. Maybe he wasn't lying to the servants. Maybe he just knew that God had something planned. He didn't know how it was going to happen, but he knew it was going to happen. Because how many guys understand that if God asks us, because this would be kind of crazy, right, to sacrifice something or someone that we love, that would be a good excuse, a good motive to panic. How many guys understand what I'm saying? I had a dream a long time ago, and um, you know those real, real vivid dreams that just really mark you? And, 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 and I, I remember, like it was yesterday, I had a dream, and in my dream, I was asked to give up my son, J.D., and it was a crazy dream. It wasn't like a sacrifice, like old time. It was like I had to give him up. It was like one of those weird, like modern day, like it was like some zombie crap, you know, some weird stuff, right? And I don't dream like that. I don't even watch those types of movies. But so I had to bring him, and I had to give him up. But here's the thing. I couldn't do it. I wasn't able. And I had to call upon some real close friends of mine to take him and watch them present him. Can I tell you, I was broken in my dream. I was broken in my dream. So here we got Abraham. He's telling them, we'll be back. I just believe that Abraham had to know. He just had to know that God was going to do something, even if if he didn't know what God was going to do. Are you with me? I don't think he was telling lies. I think he was speaking faith. Right? He says, don't worry, stay here. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. So Abraham, guys, if you got spiritual ears, open them up right now. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac. If you don't know, this story is a foretelling of the story of Jesus. Abraham took the wood that he was going to use for the sacrifice and put it on his son Isaac, the sacrifice, put it on his back to carry. Who else do you know? got wood put on their back to carry, and they were also the sacrifice. It's a foretelling of Jesus. So Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife, and as the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up. Isaac was getting smart, you know what I'm saying? Isaac was about 15, right about that age where you start getting wise. Because, you know, before that's kind of tough. But at 15, he started getting smart. He's like, um, um, Pops? <laughs> he spoke up and said to his father, if I, Dad? Yes, my son Abraham replied. Uh, <laughs> the fire and the wood, they're here. <laughs> we got that. We got that on lock, <laughs> Isaac said. But where's the lamb for the burnt offering? You got to think he was thinking, something's not right you gotta think right so Abraham answered God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering my son once again if you read this scripture before today as I've read it for 20 years I always thought Isaac was just lying to his son like I'm not gonna tell you the fullness of what's gonna go down because if you do you might run away and then I might be in disobedience with God because I ain't got no son to sacrifice so I'm just going to tell you a lie so you don't go nowhere because you 15, you might be faster than me by now. You know what I'm saying? I might not be able to catch you. You guys with me? Think about it. How many of you guys ever thought that he was just lying to his son? Right? That's the initial perspective. When you look at this, you think, man, he was just lying to his son. I would have lied to mine too. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just doing what God told me to do. But when I look at this again, and it's like yesterday, God tells me he wasn't lying to his son. He was speaking faith over a situation that he didn't know how it was going to turn out, but he knew it was going to turn out the way God needed it to turn out. The fact that God asked him to sacrifice his son, that was motivation for panic. But we do not see Abraham panicking. What we see him doing is declaring in faith that God's about to do something. He wasn't lying. He was speaking faith. He knew it. He just didn't know how it was going to get done. Now, verse 9. 
So the, uh, And uh, verse 8, and the two of them went on together. So when they reached the place God had told them about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. You got to know right now Isaac was really suspect. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. And then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Remember the exclamation points? You got to yell when you see that. If he would have been like, yo, Abraham, stop. Abraham might not have heard something, and it would have been over. And then the angel would have been in trouble with God, right? Be like, yo, I told you to get there before it happened. (laughs) Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. He said, do not lay a hand on the boy. He said, do not do anything to him, because now I know that you fear God, because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up. And there in the thicket, a.k.a. the bush on the side of the mountain, Abraham looked up and there in the thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. And he went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. And to this day it is said on the mountains, on that mountain, of the Lord, it will be provided. I'm thankful that God made a way even though Abraham didn't know how it was going to happen. I'm more thankful that the same God in the time of Abraham is the same God that's with us today. Because I get Abraham had a situation, but what about my situation? How many of you guys understand what I'm saying? I know God showed up for Abraham But how's God going to show up for me? Today's message, the title is called Provided. In the face of panic, I mean, I've been I've been doing this 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 um this juxtaposition. That's a good word, right? I just can't say it. I've been doing this juxtaposition between panic mode and God mode. Panic mode. We understand what panic mode would have been here in this moment. But God mode is knowing that God will provide, but not only that, knowing that he has already provided all that was needed. Okay? Uh, I want to jump into it today because we need to hear this. Help, Help me out early today with something real low, real low, if you would. God knew the need. Okay, three things I want you guys to understand about this. Number one, God knew the need. Okay? God knew what Isaac was gonna need which was a replacement, (laughs) sacrifice. But God knew what Abraham was going to need, which was an actual offering. Okay, sometimes as we go through life, we think that, that, that maybe God got caught by surprise. The fact that you got caught by surprise by a moment of panic does not mean that God was caught off guard. How many of you guys understand that? God was not caught off guard. He knew what was happening. The fact that Abraham could have panicked, God wasn't like, oh, no, no. God already knew what he was going to do. We knew that God was testing him. We saw that from the get-go. God's plan was the same all along. This situation didn't come out of nowhere. Oftentimes, we have to understand that in our lives, certain situations did not come out of nowhere. All right? Sometimes the situation was called by us. Yes or no? How many guys know you've caused a situation or two? That led you to a place of panic. Sometimes that situation was caused by us. Sometimes that situation was caused by him. Sometimes God needed to do something, stir you up in a little bit to be able to to, to shake you up, get you freaked out just a little bit to show you how he's going to show out. Are you with me? But here's the thing. Here's the really cool part about this. It doesn't matter if it was caused by you or you or any of you. It doesn't matter if it was caused by us or caused by him. Every time a solution is needed, God will put it in motion, the need, the solution. Think about this, okay? Matthew 6, 7 and 9. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans. Don't don't just keep talking a bunch of nonsense. For they think they will be heard because of their many words. Sometimes less words is more words, right? Verse 8. Do not be like them. For your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. 
You don't think the father didn't know what Abraham needed? You don't think the father didn't know that Abraham loved his son? You don't think that the father doesn't know how much you love your marriage and would love for it to work out? You don't think the father doesn't know how much you love your children and how much you want them to be on the right path? You don't think your father doesn't know? He knows. He knows before you even ask for it. God doesn't get caught off guard. We get caught off guard. He doesn't get caught off guard. He knows what you need before you even ask for it. Okay, so why do we got to ask for it? Because you still got to show you have faith for it. When you ask for something, that is the most simplest representation of your declaration of faith. That's the first minimal thing that you can do. Because if you can't even speak what you're hoping for, you better believe you won't take action towards what you're hoping for. But if you can begin to speak it, then you begin to live it. Yes or no? Much like any relationship. When you say, I love you, you better be ready to walk it now. Yes or no? <laughs> you don't say it if you don't mean it. That's a little advice for you, young folk. You know what I mean? Don't say it. You don't get yourself in some trouble. <sighs> See, that, that's all the older folk being like, yeah, I've been there before. <laughs> Just because you didn't see it coming doesn't mean that God hasn't already put some things in motion. Think about it. Abraham and Isaac, we're, we're, we're on the way, right? God told Abraham to go do it. He said, I'll show you where to go do it. He's on his way to do it. God knew where the scene was set for it to go down. Abraham said it when he got to the place that he was told about. So God knew where the rendezvous point was, yes or no? God knew where the intersection of the faith and the need were going to meet. Sometimes we want to, to jump ahead of what God's doing when we don't understand that until we get to a certain place, until we get to a certain question on the exam, God will not demonstrate the way he's going to meet our need. That's what happened here. <laughs> God knew the need, but God also brought the provision. He didn't just know about it. He did something about it. Are you with me? He did something about it. Think about this. He knew the location. He knew the rendezvous point. He knew where it was going to go down. Here's the question I have for you. Who sent the ram to that location? Who sent the animal to that location? If God spoke to the ram, I don't know how God speaks to the animals. I know how God speaks to me. <laughs> but I don't know how he speaks to the animals. But I'm sure at some point God would have said, hey, Mr. Mr. Ram, let's just call him Bob. Bob. I need you to go to that mountain. I need, you to go to, I need you to fulfill the purpose for which you came. I need you to be a sacrifice for me. I need you to go, find, I need you to go set yourself up on that mountainside. Because in a couple of days, think about it. The, the, the ram didn't just pop up and, you know, just show up. You understand? God didn't just drop him out of the sky and he's there. God sets stuff up in motion ahead of time. To meet you at the right time. Oh, that was good. I don't know if you heard that. Somebody write that. Somebody comment that on, 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 on the internet, please, so we didn't forget that. Make a shirt out of it, right? What did I say again? That was, I forgot what I said. <laughs> God sets stuff in motion. God will set stuff in motion ahead of time so he can show up on time. When did the ram get set in motion? That ram might have been a whole nother country, man. Lord, that's a week away. Get going. You got to hurry up. Abraham's already on the latest model donkey going. You better get there. You see what I'm saying? And the ram's going, I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. Where you got to go? Where you got to go? Oh, I got caught. I got caught. Who caused the bush to grow at that space? Come, y'all ain't hearing me, man. Who caused the bush to grow right there? Who caused the bush to grow sufficiently thick that the perfectly sized ram for the sacrifice 
would be able to caught up and get caught up in it. And I'd just like, get off of me and just keep running. How many of you guys understand what I'm saying? Who caused the ram to go? Who caused the bush to grow? God did. He'd been preparing stuff. How long does that bush take to grow? Maybe a couple years at least. God started growing that bush in that exact space a couple years ago to meet him at the place at the right time. How old was the ram? We don't know. Maybe five years? We don't know. God caused that ram to be suckled and fed and to, to, to survive by whomever it was. And maybe it, the ram was owned by somebody. Maybe it wasn't even a wild ram. Opened the gate and allowed the, the, the son of that farmer to leave the gate open like a good son would do. You know what I'm saying? Dude, where's the ram? You'll see what happened that was. Got, you know what I mean? Left the gate open and the ram got out. You guys, look, there's so many which ways this could have happened. Think about your life. There's so many which ways this could have gone down. But it just so happened to happen the way it happened. So God can make happen what's supposed to happen. God brought the provision. Here's the cool part. In this particular verse, we're introduced to Jehovah Jireh. So there, there's, a, there's an internal joke, an internal post. I'm not going to go there. But Nikki, would you like to sing for us today? Nobody knows about it, just us. I'm just saying, just you, your husband. Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. We ain't going to do that. She was like, what? You guys know that vid, those videos, those photos that you take of your friends and your loved ones, and you only share it with a select crew because you have the confidence that nobody is going to share it with anybody else? Don't worry. We ain't sharing it with nobody. We ain't sharing it with nobody. Well, she's singing that song, Jaira. How many guys have sung that song, Jaira? You're always enough. Jehovah Jaira. That's who we're introduced to. We got to go to the King James Version to see it, but he says this in Genesis twenty-two fourteen. 14. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jaira, meaning the Lord will provide. There's something interesting. We're introduced to Jehovah Jaira in this story. This is the first time we're introduced to him. We're introduced to the Lord as the provider. The name of the message today is called Provided. That means that God is not only providing something, he's made provisions already, and he will always provide for your need. Jehovah Jireh. There's something interesting. When you know what somebody's called, if you know that during the week, from Monday through Friday, people call me Attorney Perez, you know what to expect from me. Hopefully some decent legal counsel. You understand? When you know that my kids call me daddy, they know what to expect from me. Hopefully a decent father. When my wife calls me big daddy, you know. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. (laughs) How many of you guys understand what I'm saying? Hey. Oh, y'all don't like this. There's a way you keep a 19-year marriage happy, I'm just saying. Come on, somebody. Come on, Vic. Come on. <laughs> Happy anniversary, y'all. <laughs> you got a tattoo that says Big Daddy. Oh, Danny, you're, you're, you're yesterday's news, hot daddy. That's so yesterday's news. It's all about Big Daddy from now on. Oh, my goodness. We went a whole nother direction today. But how many of you guys understand that when you reveal the name of a person, you reveal their character? When we come to know the names of the Lord, we know his character. When we know he is Jehovah Jireh, we know he's a provider. When we know that he is El Shaddai, we know he is God Almighty. When we know he is El Elyon, we know that he is the Most High. When he is Adonai, he is the Lord and Master. Yahweh, he is Lord Jehovah. When he is Jehovah Nisi, he is my banner in times of difficulty. He goes before me because the armies are behind me. When he is the Lord, my shepherd, he is Jehovah Ra'ah. When he is Jehovah Rapha, he's the Lord that heals. When he is Jehovah Jehovah Shema, he's the Lord that's there. He's there. When he is Jehovah Sid Canoe, 
He is the Lord of righteousness. I'm going I'm to make me mess this one up, Lord. Forgive me. When he is Jehovah Mekodesh Kem, he is the Lord who sanctifies you. When he is El Olam, he is the everlasting God. When he is Elohim, he's just God. When he is uh, uh, God Ghana, he is the jealous God. When he is Jehovah Jireh, what is he? The providing God. When he is Jehovah Shalom, Shalom, he is the Lord of peace. When he is Jehovah Sabbath, he is the Lord of hosts. God will be what you need at the place where you need him to be it. He's Jehovah Jireh yesterday, today, and forever. He never gets caught off guard. He knew the pandemic was coming. He saw, no, I'm not going to go there. He knew the pandemic was coming. He knew the hurricanes are coming. If you live in South Florida, I don't know how you don't know that yet either. That's on you. That's, that's a you problem. You caused that problem. <laughs> but the, Jehovah Jireh, it was in his nature to provide. It was always the plan of God to provide. And it's not just money he provides. Let me be clear. If you've ever gone on a packing trip or any trip, matter a camping trip or any trip, matter of fact, what do you do? You pack some stuff up, right? Back in, in, in older times, we used different words. They used to call those provisions. You know, when you got your provisions set up, and nowadays the provisions are like the little snack packs if you got the kids, right? The little juice boxes. Uh, make sure you got all the phones and all the electronics to keep them quiet in the car. These are part of the provisions, yes or no? Right? These are the provisions. Here's the thing. God's provision, when he says it is provided, God's provision is not just financial. God's provision are all things that you can possibly need to do all things he wants you to do. It happened that in Abraham's case, the provision necessary was a lamb for the sacrifice. Are you with me? That's just what happened. Okay, but maybe for your life, the provision that you need is peace in your marriage. God can provide you that peace. He's still Jehovah Shalom. All right, maybe you need ideas. Maybe you need counsel. Maybe you need support. Maybe you need a, a church family that gets you and doesn't judge you. Maybe you need a church family that accepts you and loves you. God provides it. And here's the thing. So point number one, God knows the need. Point number two, God will always provide because it's in his nature. And point number three, God will try your faith in the place of panic. See, we all want to do, all right, God, I got to just provide, but don't make me go through some stuff. That's not the way it works. It's not the way it works. God will test your faith, okay? Are you able to believe that God has a plan even if you don't know the plan? Abraham knew that God had a plan. That's how we know he wasn't lying to his servants. He wasn't lying to his son. He knew that God had a plan. He just didn't know what the plan was. How do we know that? Because he got to the point where he bound his son, put him on the wood, and was about to do what he had to do. But all along, he said God was going to provide a lamb. All along, he said, we're going to be right back. How many of you guys understand? He was not telling his son lies. He was speaking faith. Part of this test was the faith, not only to carry out what God told him, but to, to stay faithful while he was doing it. What comes out of your mouth in the face of panic? Here's the thing. Oftentimes our emotions and our feelings or our fear get the best of us, yes or no, in the face of panic. Faith, faith, the kind of faith that Abraham says, I don't know how it's going to happen, but something's going to happen. That kind of faith, faith is the antidote to fear and feels. You got that? It is the antidote to fear and feels. He will try your faith, but he will never deny your provision. It's been provided. It's been provided. Psalm 37, 25. I was young, and now I'm old. Yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging for bread. So, Pastor, I haven't been so righteous. Well, do you believe in Jesus Christ? If you do, God says you are now the righteousness of him. It's not about your actions. You're righteous. You got it? Now, if you're righteous, then you should live as a righteous person. 
because that's the gratitude that we express in exchange for his free gift. Amen? How many guys are grateful that God has provided? How many guys are grateful that God will continue to provide? That's it. He is Jehovah Jireh. He has provided. Amen?